Thank you, Siobhan. That was fantastic. Such great learning points and, and illustrations as well. Our uh, final speaker of this, this evening is Dr. Avatel O'Glasser, and she is an associate professor in the Division of Hospital Medicine in the Department of Medicine at Oregon Health and Science University. She is the medical director of OHSU's Preoperative Medicine Clinic and their Internal Medicine Redicent Residency Programs Assistant Program Director for Social Media and scholarship. And her academic interests include perioperative medicine, as well as healthcare use of social media, and incorporating novel or non-traditional scholarship into the CV. Thank you, Avital. Take it away. So thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm Avi O'Glasser. I'm a uh, physician in uh, the left coast, Portland, Oregon. Um, and I'm thrilled to be able to talk about advocacy through social media, which is one of my passion areas. And I just, I'm so grateful to the, the speakers who went before me because I hopefully I will ping off of your content um, very nicely. Um, I think this was my sent at the beginning, but any of my content, any of my slides can be screen grabbed or photographed um, or tweeted or shared via social media. In real time, I do have my handle at the bottom of all of them. I always like to start with a little bit, I know there was some great background on social media and the different platforms. I always like to ground any talk that I'm giving um, in, some, in some core concepts, some core definitions. And I always like to start with this concept. Um, if you type social media into a Google search bar, into a web browser dictionary search bar, this is the definition, one of the definitions you get. And I like to highlight the, the three underlined words, create, share, and participate, because those are our core, sort of my core values, my, what I see as core strengths, core reasons to use social media. Um, I'll bring up the term mission-based tweeting in a little bit, and, and Twitter is my social media platform of choice for professional use, but these lessons carry over to the other platforms as well. But my mission-based tweeting, that when I come to social media to accomplish something professionally, you know, these are some of the themes that I ground myself with, that I'm here to create content, share content, and participate in discussions. And other speakers before me have talked about that this is bi-directional, this is not a go at it alone. A couple other phrases that you may have heard before, and I think they are important, both what you're thinking about professionalism and social media and then advocacy and the professionalism of advocacy through social media. Um, you'll hear the term Twitter flattens hierarchies, that the delta between us, um, be it maybe a senior attending, an emeritus professor, and a, and a trainee is narrowed through social media, or that does, I'm in perioperative medicine, the distance between a surgeon and a medicine consultant is narrowed through social media. Um, I'm going to talk about access and voice, and I have a slide for that coming up. Impact and reach is also a way of articulating what are you doing, what are you accomplishing, um, and similar to the flattened hierarchies that Twitter democratizes or elements of social media democratize how we are learning and teaching each other. And again, that's going to apply to advocacy because a lot of advocacy is education. We're teaching, we're trying to get some, a message out there to a broader audience. And this is not inherently social media related, but there are a couple of articles that I love just referencing and having, putting at your fingertips. And that sort of drove my, you know, when I was, you know, maturing my core values, you know, why am I engaged in physician-based advocacy? And I know that we're not all physicians on this talk, but healthcare professional advocacy. A um, couple of key pieces that I have in my library. Um, you know, th th this is the time we're in the 21st century and many people are taking to social media, using hashtags, using campaigns to advocate. And that as healthcare professionals, you know, a lot of what we have come to this profession to do overlaps and intersects with advocacy. Um, I think a lot of us were trained to be apolitical, to be, um, to not be advocates, to just kind of keep our heads down and, you know, focus on the, you know, the strict clinical care. Um, another piece, Don Berwick, is you know, this is a piece everybody should read. Um, and again, it speaks to sort of my, you know, I feel that there's a moral calling to use advocacy and then to use my voice on social media, because that is how one of the ways that I can exercise my voice. And then finally, another recent article from the Journal of Hospital Medicine, just talking about very broadly about physician or healthcare professional advocacy. And important to this content, they see that one of the tools to successful advocacy is to leverage social media. 
So I think there's a growing recognition that this is one of the tools in our in our, our, our armamentarium to, to exercise some expertise in content expertise areas. So when I talk about advocacy more directly and advocacy via social media, I like to think of it in, as three broad categories. And there's going to be some blurred lines between these where people say, OK, I have a Twitter account. I have an Instagram account. I have a YouTube account with a lot of followers. What type, you know, and what's my mission um, based social media activity? How can I organize myself where I identify my core values um, or identify my platform so I don't feel spread too thin, feel, sorry, feel spread too thin? Or if I'm trying to like organize, you know, articulate to a stakeholder, articulate to my boss, articulate to my supervisor, what am I engaging in? These are the buckets that I've conceptualized. And Dr. Mona Hanna, a teacher who is the pediatrician who unearthed, um, and brought to uh, attention the Flint water crisis, the lead in the Flint water crisis in Flint, Michigan, says that the so doctor, but the professional credentials in front of her name or after her name gave her a megaphone. I talked about access and voice already. Um, by being a trained healthcare professional, there is a gravitas it's almost assumed behind some of what we're saying. And that's both for good and for bad. We talked about can you, um, how do you potentially avoid professionalism pitfalls when it comes to social media? Um, I think other people in front of me have talked about that, you know, as we become more of a content expertise or you know, a name on social media, there's a downside to that. Um, so I like to think of the biggest, the first bucket as advocating on behalf of our patients at the public health level or advocating for our subset of patients that we care for. This may be very broad themes uh, that may be a political level of political advocacy or, or um, advocacy through major professional societies. Um, it may also be an advocacy campaign when it comes to lay education. I then like to think about advocacy at the you know, advocating for us within our professions. Um, you know, stepping up and saying, you know, there are things that we need to continue to be able to care for patients, be it physician wellness, um, broadening the discussion about physician suicide. You know, there's been a lot of discussion about diversity, equity, inclusion, especially in the states in the last few months. Gender equity, um, advocacy for our students. I'll talk about that more, but Med Bikini was started by a medical student. Um, and then advocacy at the professional level, really advocating for ourselves. I'm not going to focus on that too much here, but I see that as the you know, appropriate self amplification. Um, and we'll, I'll show you some examples of that in a second. So part of the reason, if you talk to some, like really some social media gurus, you know, people who have been on social media were some of the pioneers when it comes to using social media for lay education and advocacy. They'll counter a lot of naysayers to say, you know, why are you on social media? There's so much misinformation. There's so much disinformation and misinformation is inaccurate. Disinformation is more the deliberately false conspiracy theory type information. But if this is where patients are sharing information, absorbing information, that this is the place to be to try to chip away at that rather than avoid the platforms altogether. So some of the pediatricians who were early adopters of this platform for advocacy, especially when it comes to vaccine uptake, you know, will specifically say, I came to this platform because this is where the void was. Um, Dr. Jen Gunter, and um a gynecologist who's very, who has a huge social media following says, I came to social media because that's where so much misinformation was circulating. So rather than avoid, you know, I'm not gonna touch that with a 10 foot pole, I'm gonna jump into that fray and position myself to spread information. And this has certainly come up with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this article feels old at this point, it's from May, but when there was a lot of misinformation deliberately being spread through social media, um, physicians, you know, we're jumping in saying all the more reason for us to be in this public space, advocating for public health, for safety, for the safety of our profession. This is Dr. Bob Wachter from UCSF. One of the best examples of an advocacy campaign led by healthcare professionals taking off and having a very strong impact um, is that this is our lane, a gun violence awareness campaign that took off a couple years ago at this point um, in the States. That wasn't just an advocacy campaign, but it was an advocacy campaign that relied and grew because of the use of a hashtag on social media. And this is, I'm not gonna get granular with it, but this is a New England Journal article um, by some of the thought leaders in this arena 
analyzing why it was successful as a social media based campaign. And then a few other examples, um, and I'll try to highlight, you know, why might there be professionalism concerns when it comes to advocacy through social media? Um, so advocate, you know, ways in which we advocate for the public, for our patients. Um, one of the things that is a very dicey or potentially dicey in the, you know, is it professional or not, is do we get political, especially in the states, do we get nonpartisan, um, you know, we just had a we just had an election and there was a lot of, you know, strong opinions on both sides of the political divide, but as healthcare workers, should we be voicing a political or partisan position on social media? Is that opening the door to being labeled as unprofessional? Um, my mentors, you're talking about find your gurus, find your thought leaders, find the people you can ping off of. I'm of a school of thought that says, you know, a lot of what we are doing for public health has inherently been politicized in the United States. So when people ask me like, oh, you know, do I touch political topics with a 10 foot pole? I say, you know, my personal response is, think of it from a public health level, acknowledge that there's a political component to it, but first and foremost, you are advocating for your patients in public health and it's unfortunate but you know, it is what it is in this country, my country, that it has become so politicized, gun violence, health healthcare cover, access to healthcare, women's health, just to name a few. And then here's an example of how advocacy towards the public and the let you know, right now, a lot of the social media campaigns are like, cancel your Thanksgiving, our Thanksgivings in a week, cancel your Thanksgiving family dinner plans to minimize the spread of COVID. And what you see is that this starts crossing the line into advocacy for the profession and advocacy for what healthcare professionals need to be able to continue to safely care for patients who are about to, who are already inundating our hospital systems with COVID. Um, and you can also see that this tweet on the right is an example of how advocacy through the media, through other channels can be then funneled through social media. It's not strictly a social media based advocacy campaign, but it is a way to make that megaphone even louder. Um, advocating for our profession. So back in March when we did not have enough PPE, our colleagues were taking to social media to advocate for what we needed to stay healthy and be able to care for patients. And then sometimes it steps away from the direct clinical arena. And I think people are embracing this too. There's a lot of our wellness, our burnout, our quality of life issues as healthcare professionals have been silent for too long. And people are taking to social media and saying, this is a professional use of social media to advocate for ourselves as professionals who really put ourselves through enormous physical and emotional and mental stress to be able to serve. So the discussions about breaking down uh, stigma about infertility, stigma about mental health, um, I've seen this just continue to expand on social media. I don't personally find anything unprofessional about this sort of self-advocacy. And then uh, you can see the timestamp on this. I, I grabbed this right before I started talking. Again, that self-advocacy for the profession that and we are, honestly, at the south of the border, we are practically begging and pleading people to stay home right now because just the COVID is so bad in the States. And then I talked about students. You've seen that students, many who've, you know, again, students have been, you know, sort of relegated to the, you know, the silent ranks of our profession for decades. They are taking to social media to gain awareness, to have access to these conversations, to access to people who might be in a position to support their cause, that they have a voice, again, that access and voice theme. And this is what Students for Ethical Admissions has been doing incredible advocacy. Um, in the last few months, given the strain on the educational system, the medical education system, given COVID. And then I want to talk briefly about self-amplification, self-advocacy, advocacy for our, our sort of N of one peers. Um, this is, you know, people always say, oh, this is unprofessional. You, you publish a paper, don't tweet it. That's bragging, that's narcissism, that's gloating. But for a lot of us, especially again, who have not had our voices heard, women, underrepresented minorities in medicine, that using social media to advocate for ourselves um, has become more and more accepted and recognized as professional and certainly not unprofessional. So an example of a Black professor 
a black physician, Kim Great Manning, who I think has been mentioned before, advocating for her professional development. And one example, this is an article by Sasha Silka and Julie Silver that looks at how we can use social media to professionally increase our visibility. We specifically talk about women, and I think you can substitute any member of an underrepresented minority in medicine. So this is just a line from their piece. A couple examples of how we can use social media to use um, you know, advocacy when it comes to visibility. Example on the left, an all black OR team. So when you talk about the leaky pipeline, how we can advocate to plug the holes in the leaky pipeline. This is one example. Again, this is not an unprofessional selfie. This is advocacy for future generations joining our profession. The example on the right is from my institution, you know, an advocacy for gender equity in surgery. And then talk about Medicini, which has been mentioned before, was in some of the goals of session. This started out as this article in, in the Vascular Surgery Journal that labeled you know, just being a person as, who also is a healthcare professional, that certain activities were automatically being labeled as unprofessional. And then also that at certain advocacy platforms, and that was, it, that was the, the part that really got my blood pressure up, that you know, saying that advocacy was inherently unprofessional ruffled a lot of feathers. And this is the line at the bottom is from the um, Washington Post article that, you know, how can we advocate to protect ourselves? Um, and then I want to start with a little, finish up with a little uh, <laughs> Twitter origin story. <laughs> wow, I'm getting photobombed on this talk. How did I get bitten by the advocacy, advocacy bug? When did I start using social media to advocate? And it was this wake up moment from an, a colleague of mine, but Esther Chu, almost four years ago when our Affordable Care Act was under attack. And I realized that I could no longer just you know, keep my head down and tweet out journal articles, especially as a mother of a NICU grad, uh, neonatal ICU graduate who had a pre-existing condition when pre-existing conditions were really under threat in this country, that I had the, you know, the experience and the scientific knowledge, the medical knowledge that combined led to more powerful advocacy and that social media gave me a very, a louder voice to do so. A couple other, you know, when I talk about how do you, how to do this professionally um, or how to avoid professionalism pitfalls. The speaker before me did some wonderful discussion, you know, how do you gracefully, professionally, artfully, thoughtfully handle comments, reply. Um, this is some of my advice, because I think what sometimes happens, one of the pitfalls is not that you start out inherently unprofessional yourself, but it's the comments, it's the replies, it's the trolls, it's the counter arguments that sometimes create that slippery slope, maybe gets you into trouble, maybe suddenly there's a, oh, I'm going to report you to your medical school, I'm going to report you to your residency program, when you go, what did I do? Um, this is, this is one of my guiding lights. Bring passion to your advocacy, uh, but bring knowledge with it too and vice versa. I love this quote. And you know, it's a lot. There is so much fantastic source material on social media itself. So I love teaching based on other people's examples. You know, we can be irreverent with, we don't have to be disrespectful. We can disagree without being disagreeable. We can converse, we can share differences of opinion without betraying trust. I'm very much a growth mindset kind of person. I hear to, I'm here to engage, but not to attack or slander. I know disagreeing, having a different opinion um, does not inherently, it's, it's not a judgment call about you. It could become that, it could be spun into that. Because I think your voice and your advocacy really matter. But I think often that's the professionalism in advocacy is that I'm listening, I'm being open-minded. I may never agree with you, but it doesn't mean I need to treat you as less of a person. I was, you know, and giving people the door out. I respect if you don't wanna continue this. Um, and honestly, I don't even remember what this conversation was about. I can go back and look, but it just, and it, it was November 10th, so it may have been about the election. Um, and I'm just gonna end with this. Um, this is such a rapidly evolving field. I've been active on Twitter for professionally for almost six years and every year, every day, I feel like I learned something new on this platform. And who knows, my kids are seven and 10, who knows where we're gonna be when they're in college, when, when they're professionals, when they have kids of their own. And you know, another parting knowledge, you know, whatever the disagreement is or the agreement is, you know, 
How are you going to feel in the morning? How are you going to feel again 20 years from now? Are you going to be proud of your content, proud of the way that you handled yourself? And I don't say handled yourself as a subtle, like, oh, you should just, you know, stay silent and put your head down. But I think there's a way to like to stand your ground and do it in a way that doesn't leave you sick to your stomach. And I'll stop there. Thank you.